Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. Today we're moving on to naming polynomials. So just like people have first and last names, polynomials also have first and last names. So we're going to look at how to identify what name a polynomial should have. So starting with a first name, our first name is based on the degree. And when I say degree, I mean what is the highest exponent within the polynomial. The different degrees we could have, or that we could see, um, we could have a degree of zero. So this would look like x to the zero power, which hopefully, if you remember back from my very first video, you're immediately thinking, okay, well I know that would reduce to just one, because anything to the zero power is just one. When we see a degree of zero, we call that a constant. We're not going to see this x to the zero power a ton in Math 1 once we get out of Unit 1, but it's good to be able to recognize it when you do see it. So our next degree that we could see would be a degree of 1. So when we see that, we call that degree linear. That would be the first name of the polynomial. The next type of degree we could see would be 2. And if we had a degree of 2, that could look like x squared, x to the second power. We would call this quadratic. The next type of degree we could see would be a degree of 3, so this would look like x cubed. We would call that, fittingly, cubic. Now, if you have anything with a degree of 4 or more, so 4 or higher, so this could look like x to the 4th power or x to the 10th power or really anything 4 or higher, we would classify that as an nth degree. So what that means is by n, I just mean that you would replace that n with whatever number it is. So for this one it would be 4th degree, or for this one it would be 10th degree. So that's what we mean by nth degree. So that would sum up all of our potential first names of a polynomial. So looking over here at our possible last names, so in the same way we look at degree, our highest exponent for our first name, we would look at number of terms to find the last name. So we could have a one term. It's important to note we couldn't have zero here because if we had a zero number of terms, that would just be a blank space. So we couldn't have zero, but we could have one. And if we just had one term, that could look like 2x. And we would call that a monomial. So in English, mono means one. So you've, you hear terms like monotheism, monopoly, those all have that first root word of mono, which means one. So we could also have a two term problem. So that could look like 2x plus one. Okay, that's got one, two terms. In order to look at how many terms something has, we look at how many terms are separated by plus or minus signs. So in this case we have one, two. So a bicycle has two wheels, so a binomial has two terms. That's a good way to remember. Bicycle has two wheels, binomial has two terms. Our next type of term would be if we had a three term problem. So this could look like 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. So you'll notice we look at what is separated by either plus or minus signs. So we've got 1, 2, 3 terms. So in the same way a tricycle has 3 wheels, a trinomial has 1, 2, 3 terms. So those two are usually pretty easy to remember if you can just think bicycle, tricycle, two term, three term. 
And so in the same way we kind of classify this as four or more for degree, we do the same thing with Paul and O'Neill's last name. So if we have four or more terms, this could look like um, 2x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, so this one's got one, two, three, four terms, or you could even have more. We call this just kind of a generic polynomial. Anytime four or more polynomial. So a couple things we want to remember in this naming of polynomials. The first thing is that it's not, these are not correlated with each other. These are two separate columns. So that means one, linear does not automatically go with one up here. So in the same way with our names, just because your name might be John doesn't automatically mean your last name is Smith. For example, quadratic, you could have a quadratic monomial, you could have a quadratic binomial, you could have a quadratic trinomial. So these can kind of mix and match with each other. These are not correlated. So you might be thinking, why does any of this matter? Why does it matter whether what a polynomial's first name is or last name is? What, what's the purpose of this? The purpose is that once we get into solving problems, even later in this chapter, and especially in our factoring unit, whether something is a binomial, a trinomial, or a polynomial very much matters in how we solve that problem. So you're going to have to be able to look at an equation or an expression and be able to say, is it a binomial? Is it a trinomial? Is it a polynomial? Meal, because that's going to determine how you solve that problem. There are two things we need to think about before we name our polynomials. The first thing that I want us to think about is, is our expression, so I'm just going to say is it, but I mean is our expression simplified? Okay, so is our expression simplified? And the second thing I want to think about is it, is our expression in standard form? And what I mean by standard form, this is something that is so important as we move forward in Math 1. Standard form means that you would always list your highest exponent first, you would then move in descending order of exponents and you would have your constant last. So let's see this in action. So if I had 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x plus 1. This is in standard form because if you look at all my exponents, so I've got a 3, a 2, I've got an understood one right there. My exponents start with the highest and they move in descending order down. And then the last important part is, is your constant last? So my constant is pretty easy to identify because it's the one term that doesn't have a variable with it. So it's just either a whole number or a fraction, but there's no variable. We call that the constant and it always goes last when we're writing an expression or an equation. So let's take the skills that we just learned in naming polynomials and let's apply them to some examples. Looking at this first example, I need to ask myself the two questions that I mentioned on the bottom of that last page. So my first question is, is it simplified? And so what I mean by is it simplified is, are there any like terms that I can combine? Now Math 1 students coming from what we just learned about laws of exponents, typically we'll say, okay, well you've got two x's, you can combine those. And here's the thing, if I was multiplying or dividing, yes, I could combine these two things. But if I'm adding or subtracting, my variable and its exponent have to be the exact same. So when we're talking about adding or subtracting, it's very picky. It has to be the exact same variable with the exact same exponent. So here, yes, these are both x, but this is x squared and this is x to the understood first power. So these, although they're close, 
They're not exactly the same. So I cannot combine these two terms. And then obviously I can't combine either of those with the 7 because the 7 doesn't even have an x. So I asked myself, is it simplified? And in this case, the answer is yes. So my second question on that last page that we talked about is, is it in standard form? So remember we said standard form has our highest exponent and then it goes in descending order. So down to the lowest exponent and then our constant last. So in this case, yes, it's simplified. Yes, it's in standard form, so we can go ahead and name this. So I need to give it a first name first based on degree. So I looked at my highest exponent, and in this case it's a 2. So if you remember from the last page, 2 means quadratic. So there's its first name. Now I need to give it a last name. And remember, my last name is based on how many terms does it have. So I look at how many sections are separated by either adding or subtraction signs. So in this case, I've got one, two, three. So it's got three terms, and we call that a tri, like a tricycle trinomial, three terms. So moving on to my next question, my first step is, is it simplified? So is there anything here that I can combine? Well, I see this is just a five, a whole number on its own. This is a negative two X, so no, I can't combine those terms uh, anymore. My next question is, is it in standard form? Looking at this, I see I've got my constant first, and then I've got my variable and exponent. And remember, that variable has an understood exponent of one. So definitely not in standard form. I need to do some rearranging here. Now an important thing to note is that whatever sign is in front of a term, that goes with it. So I know I need to put this negative 2x first, and I have to have that negative sign carry over with it. In the same way, I want to put my constant last now, there's an understood positive sign in front of that 5. So this would be plus 5. So is it now in simplified form and also in standard form? Yes, I can give it a name. So for its first name, I look at the highest degree. And remember, my highest degree here is 1. And we call that linear. So that's its first name. For my last name, I look at how many terms does it have? So how many separate sections does it have? And in this case, it has two. So remember, two bicycle binomial. Okay, so in my third example here, I always ask my first question, is it simplified? So are there any like terms that I can go ahead and combine? So I see I've got an exponent of 5 here and also x to the fifth power here. So remember I said these have to be exactly the same in order to add them. Here they are. So I can, and I'm not adding actually, I'm subtracting, but here I can go ahead and combine these. So 3x to the fifth minus, and notice I'm including that sign with it, minus 2x to the fifth would just be x to the fifth. There's an understood one out in front of it. If you need to see it, please write it. So notice I'm combining like terms and my variable and exponent stay the exact same. Looking at this, I see that the rest of this clearly is not in standard form. So as I'm rewriting it, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it in standard form. So I've already got my highest exponent of five. So let me look for my next highest exponent. Remember this one's got an understood one. 3 would be my next highest. I've got to make sure I keep that sign with the 4x cubed. So now my next highest exponent would be 7x to the first power, which we just write as 7x. Notice I kept that sign with it. And then lastly, I'm going to put my constant, and I'm going to keep that negative sign with it. Now I have an expression that is both simplified and in standard form, and I can give it a name. So my highest exponent for my first name is a 5. So remember, anything 4 or above falls into that nth degree category. So in this case, we're going to call it a 5th degree as the first name. 
Now as my second name, I count how many terms does it have? So how many sections does it have? One, two, three, four. So remember anything four or above, we call a polynomial. This has been Miss Smith with Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.